Hello all! Today I'm going to explore Leipzig, Napoleon Encircled. This is a folio game from Decision Games. Their tagline is minutes to learn, quick to play, historically accurate. And this is part of my ongoing coverage of the Battle of Leipzig that took place between uh, the coalition and France in 1813. Uh, I've been covering some uh, postcard games this week on my Coffee with Kilroy, and I thought I'd go with, into a little bit uh, deeper dive into the battle and into uh, some gameplay. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have a lot of Leipzig games uh, that cover, you know, the either the entire battle or large portions of the battle. So uh, decided in covering those postcard games to pull this game out, which uh, is one of my only games I have that, that kind of faces the entire battle. So if you're not familiar with folio games, they come in a folio. So you get them in this little folder here. Uh, the map comes in here. I've got the map already laid out. But the map comes in here. Uh, you have the rules in here. Uh, this is a series system. So this is the musket and saber series. So you're going to have the standard rules for the series. And then you're going to have specific rules for uh, Leipzig or, the, or Napoleon encircled in this case. Uh, you also have counters. They'll come um, on, a, on a counter sheet. And then, you, of course, you'll have to uh, punch them out. And uh, sp uh, I'll, I'll do a little bit of a, of a warning that uh, these counters are not clipped and you're going to see nibs. So if you're faint of heart and do not want to see nibs or, or uncut counters, please uh, look away. So uh, I've got them uh, basically bagged into two bags that um, have the uh, French forces on one side with a few administrator markers and then the coalition forces on the other side. Now, the, the when I say coalition forces, uh, another uh, title of this battle, other than the Battle of Leipzig, is the Battle of the Nations, because there were several nations that uh, were represented in this battle. You had the French uh, being the primary actor on one side, uh, or the, the French Empire, and then on the other side you had um, the Austrian uh, Empire, or you had um, Sweden uh, had had a presence. Russia had a presence. Poland uh, even had a, a few British forces. I, I don't recall if they're actually represented in the countermix here, but it was a very small uh, contingency under uh, Bernadotte, who was Napoleon's ex-marshal, uh, who was now the crown prince of Sweden at this time. So let's take a look at the standard rules here. So you have the standard rules and then you have the rules that are uh, specific to this game or to this folio game here. Uh, the standard rules are typical uh, decision games format. This is a triple column. It's eight pages long. You know, not not the smallest of text, so decent, uh, decent, uh, you know, uh, uh, clarity, I guess, in that regard. It's in the case system, so you'll have, you know, 13 and then 13.1 and 13.2 and all all the uh, the standard way to uh, present uh, war game rules. You have uh, some images for the counters to talk about the counters and what you see on the counters. Um, not color. You know, the folio series typically does not come in color. Uh, just to give you an example of some of the counters again you know i'll do a pre-warning the, these are not uh these are not not clipped but there's there's napoleon's counter right there and they are double sided you have some artillery you've got some mounted units and they use the typical, uh, some of them like, like like use some of the NATO symbols, some of them just use an image. Like here's your uh, typical line unit, infantry unit there. So that's an example of some of the, the French units or the counters, which also have a designation here to explain what you have on the counter. So you have combat factor, you have morale rating, and you have movement allowance. You also have uh, the unit ID, formation, and unit type. 
and then army color on the counter as well. Um, the rules are relatively, uh, this is the musker, musket and saber system, are relatively straightforward. I mean, you're going to have movement and stacking and zones of control and a combat results table and, you know, dealing with retreat and morale and routes, you know, all the stuff that you're expect from a Napoleonic era. Uh, you've got, you know, of course, artillery and cavalry are, are important at this stage. And then you've got your leaders and they have what is called a command span there. You know, Napoleon's is an A in that regard. And, it and the, the effects of leaders on that command and, and movement, morale, and coordination. You have recovery and, you know, the like. So there is the standard rules for uh, musket and saber. And there's a few games in this series now. And then you have the uh, rules that are specific to this scenario, to this battle. These are four pages, but they also have your combat results table. So this is your combat results table, your terrain effects chart that is specific to this battle. And the rest of this is going to be uh, some special rules, but also your setup, right? So this is your setup for the battle. And... Uh, the victory conditions, any kind of special rules. There's really only about a page uh, and uh, really not even a full page. You've got some of the page here for special rules and some of the page, some of the page here, but then you have folio notes uh, talking about player designer notes, player notes, and then order of battle. So player notes usually talks a little bit about strategy and the like. So not a lot of, of extra rules there. This right here, I can't, I think I printed this out. I think there, there was errata on some of the counters. And so I think I, I printed this out. I don't think this came with it. I can't recall now. It's been a while since I've, I've pulled this out, but I, I might've printed that out from, um, you know, from uh, some web, web BGG or some other site if it was errata. I don't know if it came with it or not. Um, but these come in a folio. They come in, typically come in a bag. Uh, and I keep some of these folio games I keep in the same bag that I, I get them in. Uh, of course, I have to add bags for the counters. And there you have it. Uh, talking about this game here, this back uh, explains a little bit of uh, the system. Leipzig utilizes an all-new, of course, this was, what year was this? This was 2010 copyright here. All-new musket and saber combat system, which provides a simple yet accurate portrayal of Napoleonic warfare. The combat system is intuitive, including all the details that characterize battle during the era, while also simulating the unique uh, uh, aspects of 19th century warfare. Uh, in Leipzig, new combat results table emphasizes playability while also simulating the lethality of musket and bayonet engagements of the time. Leaders accelerate the action, replicating the importance of their presence during battle, and supply lines require players to protect their logistic trains. While winning a battle will depend upon deployment maneuver and massing firepower as well as strengths and weaknesses of each particular army. So there you have it. That is the description or some of the description for uh, Leipzig. Now, uh, I've played this a few times. Uh, I found it to be somewhat um, interesting. Of, you know, I've went, I've went back and I've started researching the battle uh, some more since I've started covering these postcard games this week. So I, you know, got out my uh, got out my military atlases, and I, unfortunately, I don't have a a really good book on the Battle of Leipzig. So if you have one uh, to recommend, let me know. But my when I played this game, it felt a little different than what I've read in descriptions. In that my my recoll and I played this uh, several years ago, but my recollection of that play was it was. Um, much more on the perimeter that the, that a lot of the engagements and a lot of the conflicts uh, were much more on the perimeter and not towards the center uh, around Leipzig as much. Now, the way this battle started out, I mean, if you go pre uh, October sixteenth, uh, and there's a there's a table right here, if you want to look there. That gives you your day. So you go October 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th, and then you have the hours of the day and you know night turns included. Um, 
the battle proper really kind of started on the 16th as some of the major uh, engagements. And uh, prior to that time, Napoleon was north of Leipzig uh, and Murat was south and uh, Schwarzenberg was south. And so Napoleon moved his, he was basically outnumbered. The total numbers vary depending on the accounts, but the coalition forces had, you know, around over 300,000, some were, some estimates of 320,000, maybe even up, upwards of, of 350,000. And the, the French forces were under 200,000. Um, again, those estimates vary. But in some instances, you know, Napoleon was outnumbered almost two to one. Uh, however, he made a move from north of Leipzig to come south uh, to uh, reinforce Murat and try to do uh, have bring more equal numbers uh, against um, uh, Schwarzenberg on the south uh, and try to d d uh, defeat him in order, which is kind of a typical Napoleon tactic of, you know, take out somebody and then turn and, and take out the next one. Um, which is kind of what he you know, tried to do at Waterloo and in other battles as well. But one of the things that kind of surprised him on this was he was not expecting uh, Blücher and Bernadotte, who were north of him, um, to arrive at the battlefield until possibly the 17th. However, uh, Blücher showed up early in the north, and uh, that diverted some of his attention uh, away uh, from the battle as well. Um, and uh, he was never able to get a decisive victory in the south. And by the time uh, Blücher and then Bernadotte uh, were able to um, reinforce the situation and then Schwarzenberg was able to come up the uh, uh, area that would cut off his retreat. He had basically had this line out of Leipzig, which is primary uh, avenue of retreat or, or preserving that in, in the event of retreat, which is, spoiler alert, what happened. Um you know, it, it collapsed on him, uh, and, and they were able to kind of close the vice, and by the 19th, Napoleon was uh, leaving the city uh, via really probably one bridge. I mean, he had time to probably build other bridges or build other, uh, take other routes out of the city, but had really just left this one bridge, and uh, in, in the haste to get out, they actually blew the bridge a little early and left some forces trapped uh, behind at that point, you know, kind of enemy lines um, in his uh, withdrawal from Leipzig. And this is really one of the largest battles in the Napoleonic era, definitely the largest battle of this uh, coalition. Uh, there's several coalitions that took place over time. Um, and uh, uh, really the, the last big hurrah uh, before Waterloo, uh, because from here on out, it's, it's a declining uh, Napoleon. It, it's kind of a, a battle back to France and then actions in France and then eventually the abdication and then the return and then Waterloo and then the uh, uh, final resting place in uh, St. Helena. So anyway, um, so my my uh, experience with this game, which is limited, I think I played it uh, at least a couple of times, maybe three, but it's been a while since I played it. It felt more along the perimeter that you really were kind of pushing out on the perimeter, which is really what the what the uh, what the French want to do uh, in this battle. So maybe I was just successful, but I felt it was like too far in the perimeter and not and and the action did not take place where some of it historically really did take place. Uh, in that regard, let's turn the map this way for a little bit here. You know, some of the earlier actions were in the south here. In fact, there was one of the largest um, cavalry attacks uh, in, in the Napoleonic era, for that matter, uh, took place uh, in the south here, uh, which was kind of a t tip of the cap to the coalition forces. But each side lost about, I think, I think like 2,000 casualties in that encounter. However, you know, the coalition c could give up more uh, casualties at that point uh, throughout this whole battle. Since they had the superior numbers, them losing the same amount really in equal to loss for uh, the French players. But there's some major uh, engagements along the south here. Uh, Marat was uh, thick into the fray. As I said, Napoleon tried to bring some forces back to bear. Um, he actually had Ney responsible for north of Leipzig and actually pulled Ney back 
to, wanted to pull some of his forces to uh, bring them to this battle. However, um, uh, Schwarzenberg had an attack here in um, uh, Lindenhow that, again, if you lose this, you're going to lose your line of retreat. And so some of those forces that, that Ney was going to send south here end up having to turn to uh, – to deal with uh, the Linden House situation, you know, because Napoleon always wanted to keep his line of retreat um, open in that regard. Also, uh, Blucher showed up, and there was a major engagement here at, at Mockern, um, which there was a French uh, Marines, I believe, there at the outset, um, and a lot of battle back and forth there. Um, and actually, if if uh, the the uh, Blucher's forces eventually uh, won the day on that, or, or were able to make the forces retreat. However, I mean, if that were to hold out uh, uh, even longer, it could have possibly changed the situation um, in uh, in the overall situation in this battle. But but they were they were to fall, and so there was more of a retreat back to the defense of uh, Leipzig. Uh, Bernadotte kind of came in from this route, uh, came in from the north, and then came in from this route. Although there's some criticism that he kind of slow walked it, uh, he did not arrive at the same time as Blucher and and uh, was not as aggressive in uh, his attacks. I mean, I don't know if that's um, again. I haven't read a real good ac account of this battle, so I don't know if that's more of the romance of he was a former marshal or if that was you know true to what was going on in his uh, mobility there. But the uh, most of the heavy action takes place on the 16th. The 15th is a relatively slow day. There are some actions that take place, but not nearly as much uh, or as aggressive as the first day. And then um, on the uh, the 18th really becomes the, 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 the closing of the vice, so to speak, uh, where there's a major uh, push forward and Napoleon actually pulls his forces back to, you know, closer into Leipzig, but now he's basically surrounded on all sides with uh, Blucher, Bernadotte, uh, uh, Schwarzenberg, all uh, circling around him. Um, there was also early, like on the 16th, there was some um, confusion in that Schwarzenberg had forces on both sides of the rivers here, uh, and so that impeded movement back and forth, but by the, uh, by the uh, 18th, you now have everybody really having their position and closing in on uh, Leipzig proper, to which, you know, by the 19th, Napoleon knew it was over, and uh, early in the morning, uh, they started exiting out through this one uh, bridge here, uh, and I think Napoleon left around 10.30, uh, but within like 30 minutes after that, there was a major a push onto Leipzig, and it eventually fell. They blew the bridge, and the rest is history, so to speak. So that that's a huge overview. I'm, I'm I apologize for not naming some of the specific engagements and battles. There are several in here. Uh, one reason because my pronunciation is absolutely horrible. But uh, anyway, um, but the, you know this line of retreat was always a key element. You know. The, the the early arrival of Blucher was a key element. You know, the battles in the south, if Napoleon was were able to uh, decisively defeat uh, Schwarzenberg early on, that could have changed the outcome as well. Another thing that the coalition was kind of struggling with is that it was a coalition, right? Uh, Napoleon can make all the decisions on his side and, you know, typically did. Um the coalition, uh, even though Schwarzenberg was really kind of the head of the coalition, there was the you know the political aspects of dealing with the Russians and dealing with um, you know, the uh, Blucher's forces and the Swedish forces and and trying to get consensus on on how the attack was going to go and and where people were supposed to be at during it. So there you have it. There's a little bit of an overview of the Battle of uh, Leipzig. Uh, I think this game does a fine job. This is not a complex game. This is not, um, this isn't your Labatai or your Eagles or, or even your Lab Library of Napoleonic Games. I mean, those games have much more um, uh, street cred, for lack of a term, but they, they have a little bit more chrome on them. There's a little bit more attention to detail, attention to the command aspect, attention to uh, the, the variety of, of, of factors that affect combat 
And uh, so there's, and, and, and the maps are beautiful. This isn't a bad map, but the maps in some of those games are, are absolutely, uh, or, or works of art almost. So, um, so if, if you're wanting to get kind of an introduction to uh, Leipzig and, and get a feel over for, for the, for the battle, uh, and not necessarily get bogged down in heavy combat or, or CRT uh, type charts, uh, then this is a fine introduction to it. it it's it's not, uh, doesn't really outstay its welcome. This didn't take forever to play this. Uh, although, uh, as I said, my experiences were that it, it didn't collapse as much. It was fought more on the edges than than what I, I, at least I recall being fought more on the edges than, than what happened in real life. Again, I, I, I might just be that good. Um, not. Anyway, uh, that's what I have for you today on Leipzig Week. If you have played this game, love to hear your thoughts on this, whether you love it or hate it or think it's, it's, it doesn't, you know, doesn't simulate the battle at all or, or, you know, that it's, it's rules or, are, are too ba basic or just don't work. I mean, some people don't like decision games uh, because it's decision games. Um, I found this to be a fine game. I'd, I'd like to get something a little bit meatier uh, and a little bit more uh, 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 deeper into the conflict and understanding the conflict a little bit better. But I thought this was fine at at a at the at what it's trying to do it's not trying to be the end all be all of of uh, games that are simulating this battle so i thought this was fine i thought it was actually a, a good introduction i thought it's a good introduction to this system this is one of the larger games in the musket uh and saber system they have some even smaller folios that deal with musket and saber that you can kind of get in and push the counters around this one has it might be the largest one in the series or pretty close to it. Of course, this was a very large battle. So the fact that they're trying to recreate a very large battle with some relatively simple rules and, and, a, and a, a relatively uh, simple map, I think that's uh, there's something uh, to be commended there as well. Anyway, love to know your thoughts on any of this or how I might just be full of it. <laughs> just be civil. Uh, leave your notes in the comments because that's how I know that you stop by. Anyway, thank you so much for stopping by. I greatly appreciate it. You can have an all. You all have a great rest of your morning, noon, or night. Take care. Thanks for watching.